Besides placing your trust on the fund management companies by buying the unit trust they manage, some investors adopt a strategy called cost averaging strategy when they buy shares. Now let's look at this graph. Let's say you have 20,000 ringgit to invest. If you happen to buy the shares at point A and sell them at point B, you will be very happy. On the other hand, if you buy the shares at point B and sell them at point C, you will be very unhappy. Everyone wants to buy at point A and sell at point B. But the fact is that it is very, very difficult to predict the movement of the share price. So if you dislike fluctuation, you want more stability, you can use this strategy called cost averaging strategy. You buy shares at fixed amount of money at fixed period of time. For example, 2000 ringgit every month. So the cost of the share will average out. This means that the risk is lower. You may not make that much money, but you won't lose that much either. The second benefit of this strategy is to take fear and emotion out from your investing behavior. If you invest one lump sum at a point, you'll be so excited when the share prices go up, like here. But you will be depressed when the share prices go down. Adopting this cost averaging strategy will take these emotions out and let you have more peace. Furthermore, fear and emotions are likely to cause us to make irrational decisions when we buy and sell shares. One more benefit of this strategy is the potential that you tend to lower the cost of buying the shares at the end. This is because when you invest a fixed amount each time, when the price is high, you get to buy fewer shares. When the price is low, you get to buy more shares. Since you are buying fewer high price shares and more low price shares, so in the long term, the cost of the shares tend to become lower. Now let's look at one example. Here, Mr. Chu decided to adopt the cost averaging strategy for company Z. He will invest 2,000 ringgit every month for six months. In January, the price of the share is 2 ringgit. The units of shares he buys is investment amount divided by shares price. So we have 2000 divided by 2. So he can buy 1000 units. In February, the price is 1 ringgit 90 cent. So he buys 1053 units. In March, the price is 1 ringgit 73 cent. So he buys 1156 units. In April, the price is 2 ringgit 2 cent. So he buys 990 units. In May, the price is 2 ringgit and 8 cent. So he buys 962 units. In June, the price is 2 ringgit 24 cent. So he buys 893 units. So the total investment is 12,000 ringgit. And the total units of shares he bought is 6,053 units. The average cost of the share is 12,000 ringgit divided by 6,053 units. And it is 1 ringgit 98 cent per share.